Ah, he really wants to apologize for knocking all of my coffee onto the kitchen table. No, not all of it. Uh, about 10% made it onto the floor, and thus is in the bin under the kitchen sink now. But, uh, yeah, this is the first time in a while that I've gotten it ground at the grocery store uh, before taking it home, just because, you know, it was in the smaller can at Trader Joe's, and that's really all I need to get me through at least the next week, hopefully into March. Um, but, uh, yeah, he knocked my canister of coffee, which, you know, does not have a locking lid, because it's a vintage canister. You know, it just has a little top that rests on, and he knocked it over. He's never paid attention to my coffee canister ever before, until today. And I swear it's because the coffee was ground before I came home. So, this is the, uh, the, uh, the, the unboxing, the mailbox video that I really wanted to shoot on Saturday, but instead I shot a very, uh, catty, even, um, even very, uh, I don't know, I've got a low tolerance for bullshit. As I've said in the comments, um, my, uh, my father was in 12-strep groups my whole life, and, um, in and out of AA since he was about 14, but, um, he was on the wagon, um, most of my life. Uh, he had a relapse during the divorce for week, maybe 10 days tops, uh, the crescendo of my father's relapse as a recovering alcoholic. Ah, oh, God, that was... Uh, I don't know if you've seen houses designed like this, but it's common enough in downtown Ypsilanti. There are all of these beautiful old Victorian houses in the area. Victorian, Edwardian, uh, definitely a lot of late Victorians. So, um, and I see this commonly enough in Ipsy, so... Do, do, do. So, uh, this is not at all to scale. So... The house was like this, or at least this is the side view of the house. Maybe this wasn't quite as steep, but there was a door right here, and it's on a lot, and it's, you know, and there's a door on a lot of other houses in downtown Ipsy. There's one, maybe two, um, that I see when I have to walk to get to a couple other bus stops. And it's clearly not, you know, there's, there's clearly no artifact on the, uh, on the house's construction that says, you know, there was, oh, well, there was a ladder up there so they could get in because it was a duplex. Like, no, there's clearly no artifacts of that. So it's just this little deck on the roof. And, um, in, a, in the empty lot I grew up in, because my crackhead younger sister finally succeeded in burning it down, but that's another story for another time. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the house I grew up in with my father and my mother and my sisters until I was 12. Um, uh, the, the master bedroom opened up onto the, uh, onto the roof of the first story. And so my father was out on the roof in a towel, implying he had been sitting in the bath because that's how old the house was. It didn't even have a shower foot up. It had an old claw foot bathtub. I loved that bathtub. But the crackhead burned it down. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, uh, so my guess is he was in the bath, probably drinking in the bath, and just went out onto the roof and started singing the score to South Pacific. This is not an exaggeration at all for comedy. This is my life. My, li uh, my life has been a sitcom. I used to have a button on one of my old messenger bags, but this was like 15 years ago. And unfortunately, all of the fonts that I use, like, my buttons are all one inch uh, diameter, so um, about as big as a U.S. quarter, which are in my backpack right now, and I'm not going to get to that, just to show you. Um, and so, uh, all the fonts that I use, um, they're a bit, like, this is, like, the most legibility I can really have on these uh, old alt-gothic um the old alt-gothic little logo sort of thing. I don't even know what the... Oh, that's supposed to be coffins. That's right. I can't believe that I... Either I noticed this a long time before and immediately forgot, 
or I am just that half blind and oblivious sometimes, but uh, yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know, it kind of looked a little haphaz- it's kind of haphazardly drawn. I forget who drew that, but um, but yeah, so the buttons I make aren't big enough, and it does necessitate a completely different machine in my case to make the bigger ones, but um, one of them, I believe one of my exes bought it for me. Uh, it said, it was one of the two and a quarter inch buttons, like the badge a minute size, and it said, I am the wacky neighbor in the sitcom of life, and he gave it to me, and yeah, I'm pretty sure it was one of my exes. I can't remember if it was Byron or Scott now. Um, I was with Scott much longer, so he definitely had more opportunity to give it to me, but I don't know. I, I want to say it was Byron, because I think at that point, Byron had already heard enough of my goofy-ass stories about, and they're all completely true, about my life, especially growing up, that... Uh, he decided that, um, that, yeah, I was, uh, I was indeed the wacky neighbor in the sitcom of life, especially considering how he and I kind of got together, but that's another story for another time, so, um, I need to feather this. Why haven't I feathered this? Uh, if you haven't seen before, this is my antique box cutter, um, uh, basically this notch here is meant to, um, give enough tension onto twine to hopefully break some of the, um, um, weaker, um, piles of twine, and there's an edge that's barely sharp, and I need to feather it on my knife steel, but, uh, but yeah, it can bust through packing tape, even the kind that has the threads going, and I've got a box full of peanuts again. God damn it. I hate packing peanuts. I really do. I wish people would just use newspaper. Oh, God. I mean, at least as far as packing peanuts goes, it looks like these are um, made from, like, I don't know. It looks like they're just uh, um, cut up pieces of those, uh, those styrofoam, um, inserts, like when you get, you know, electronic equipment, and it's got the little styrofoam inserts on either side to give it just enough of a cushion not to be damaged too terribly in the, uh, in the shipping process, including this one, the, uh, the last, uh, the three or four, this is like the third or fourth, um, in a succession of eBay packages I have... Um, ordered. <laughs> that is full of goddamn packing peanuts. I don't want packing peanuts. The the previous two, my uh, my gelatin molds that you saw me unbox, those don't even need packing peanuts. Just mash a bunch of newspapers around them, right? This is not something that should be damaged too thoroughly. You know, if you don't, you know, if you you know, use something besides the, uh, the massive crunch of packing peanuts. Ugh. Right. Um, so I don't want to use my, uh, my box cutter to split through this tape because it is... I gotta put a lot... I gotta really bear down on that thing, and I don't want to potentially damage this any more than it is because... I got a really good price. It was, um, you know, if it was one of those, like, starting bid of whatever the fuck, you know, or best offer, and I made an offer of $25, and it has a couple spots that needed repair. Oh, yeah, I see that one here, and... Oh, yep, there's the strap that could probably stand to be replaced, but... Okay, I might want to uh, take some of my archival tape to the bellows. We see this here. Um, uh, I'm, they didn't have the greatest photos, but I knew it was going to need a couple relatively minor repairs. Oh, I think, I think they might want to, I think I might want to replace 
another button on this side as well. But so we see we have one button here that needs to replace. Like my harmonium, uh, I'm probably going to need to get a good um, pump on the air uh, in the bellow. You know, I'm going to probably going to have to pump it quite a bit to uh, really get it started with the bellows. I don't know if I'd be able to find any um, vintage ribbon to um, replace. Yeah, we see um, that used to hold the ribbon down. And then we've got this here. Uh, I will probably take a look on Etsy and um, Ruby Lane for, um, you know, for, uh, for some good ribbon to replace that. Uh, I can probably just make do with a uh, smaller size guitar strap because this is what this that's what this button is so you can put it around there and wear it and it looks like there was another uh, one <laughs> just like it right here that might also be contributing to the uh, the weak airflow in the bellows but other than that it looks pretty much as expected like I said I knew there needed to be a uh, I mean, I probably could just make do this way for a bit, but I don't want to do that too much because I prefer to keep my nails a bit on the longer side. I'm just making noises right now. Yeah, the way these two on this side are set up, it looks like this is just how they're supposed to be. So yeah, I'm going to want to replace this button here. Um, I do see buttons come up from time to time on eBay and I will I will probably order buttons um, I'll have to take a measurement of the millimeters that they want but I'm probably gonna order my own buttons and uh, take some good looks to see if it's a repair I might be able to do myself if not there are a few places in the area that I know to check first um, probably Oz Music out on Packard Road if you're in the Ann Arbor Ypsilanti area. Uh, I know there's a place that does pianos and they do some organs, but organs and uh, pianos are two completely different families of instruments. Um, organs, especially reed organs, which would include um, uh, my harmonium and, of course, um, accordions. Uh, they are... Uh, they are reed instruments um, and woodwinds. I forget how... I want to say pipe organs. I know that they're different. They're a different classification of organ from reed organs, but I want to say those are also considered woodwinds. And uh, pianos, on the other hand, are percussive string instruments, much like harps and guitars, meaning you strike the strings um, rather than um, a bowed string instrument, which would be the uh, violins and viols, which are two different families of instrument. Uh, uh, they're both bowed strings, so they're in that category, but they're two different uh, categories. So viols and violins, um, those are bowed strings, uh, pianos, harps, guitars, uh, similar, like, similarly mandolins and all of that, so um, anything where you strike the string you know, which would include strumming it um, to a beat. Uh, that would; those are percussive strings. Accordions, harmoniums. Uh, well, any pump organ. Harmoniums are um, are a uh, compressed air uh, free reed organ. Melodians are a compact vacuum pump organ. So rather than compressed air, they they operate on. Yeah, you know, with uh, with a bellows, they operate um, with with a vacuum system uh, to pump the air uh, through the reeds. And um, so, melodians are of a compact size. Uh, you've sp you might have seen the nineteenth century lap organs, which is a melodian uh, that you know you sit on your lap and you operate it like this. So it's kind of like my my harmonium, but. The bellows is in a different part, and um, it has a vacuum system rather than um, compressed, uh, <laughs> rather than a compressed air. Um, a lot of people will um, refer to uh, harmoniums as the portable kind, but a harmonium, regardless of its size, is a compressed air reed organ, a free reed organ, 
as whereas uh, Melodian are a compact uh, vacuum system, free read organ, and um, just a generic pump organ is a uh, is a larger size, so the vacuum system is not compact. Um, or um, reed organs are woodwinds. I want to say pipe organs are as well, though they're you know they clearly have a different operation operational system than a reed organ does. Uh, so yeah, they are they are woodwinds, <laughs> not you know not you know its own separate thing. They are not you know keyboard instruments, um, reed organs and pipe organs. They certainly have a keyboard, um, but uh, but that's such a broad classification for instruments that would include in musical instruments of completely different operational systems. Like it would include electronics, so synthesizers, or at least most kinds of synthesizers. Uh, synthesizer is actually a very broad category. Um, uh, it includes percussive string pianos, and it includes um, woodwinds, you know, such as reed organs, <laughs> and um, certain styles of accordion. This is a diatonic button accordion. Um, I don't remember exactly why, other than the fact that, you know, I don't know why, the, where the diatonic comes from, other, uh, but obviously the button, uh, part of the name is obvious. That's about it. Uh, it looks like if there ever was a maker label on it, it looks like that came off ages and ages ago. There was no name... Uh, for the uh, for the um, maker um, listed in the um, posted on the listing, so I I may very well just um, make my own little um, you know name label and um, paste it with an appropriate glue onto this side just so that it has my name with some little fanciful decorative look to it. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm gonna find my archival tape that I use for repairing my, um, my books and my antique sheet music. <laughs> um, so I can, uh, um, maybe work on the bellows a little bit, give them a little bit of, a uh, reinforcement, and probably next month I'm going to look at, um, finding a replacement, uh, button for this one here. Uh, until then... Looks like my fingers are just small enough <laughs> to go into this one little thing. One of the one of the few little joys I get of being, you know, a borderline dwarf. And I say that um, I'm not. You know, I understand that people who are actually um, classified as a medical dwarf, meaning they are under four foot ten. Uh, they have very different challenges to me, but my doctor has said that um, an area of my spinal curvature is something that she's only really seen in a chondroplasic dwarves. And, um, and then there's the fact that my knees are never perfectly straight, especially when I'm standing. Um, and that is a uh, common trait to people with a chondroplasic dwarfism. So it is quite possible though most people um, with it are under four foot ten, thus a chondroplasic dwarfism. Um, but it is possible, um, you know, it's one of those things that I could probably order the diagnostic testing, but I'd probably have to pay for it out of my own pocket, as there is no medical reason to do it. <laughs> uh, I just know that I was... Uh, just under four foot nine until I was nineteen years old <laughs> when I shot up to about four eleven and a half. <laughs> so yeah, like on the borderline of that, as well as the borderline of low vision. So ah, uh, I hope you enjoyed me getting that out. Like I said, I was just kind of fooling around with it, not trying to play any song. I do want to uh, um, use my archive tape to uh, make some little repairs to the bellows. Just you know, to, uh, to get the air, um, just have better air compression in there. So, um, you have met my new accordion, and I love it. I do, I love it. It was $41 after postage, and I'm very, very happy with this already. Ah, 
So, um, it looks like that's about it right now, and I've got nothing else to say. I, um, should probably get to that computer repair that I put off last night, uh, due to back pain, and just, it, by the time I realized what time it was, it was really late. I need to get my, I need to have my lunch. It is well past my lo typical lunch time, but I made something fairly light, and... I could stand to do a 10-minute pickup in the kitchen so that things do not get too much further out of control again. And, as always, dears, bats and kisses, and I do love you all, um, especially my newer-ish subscribers. Uh, if you have made it this far, indeed, I have... A uh, couple ideas for the next edited video. I could do a separate video on um, my definition of what constitutes an elder goth. I will also include my list of my favorite uh, elder goths on YouTube. Or I was thinking of doing a fun little video of ungoth things that most of the goths I know, especially of a certain generation i've noticed that there's that there's a lot of things that you know especially you know the uh the the gen x goths you know much like myself you know will see and you know that, that we just tend to like a lot of things that um that are very clearly not goth and you know but you know we love them anyway so um i don't know i don't know which one i'm going to do i've got my live stream tomorrow at uh, 9.30. So, yeah, like, leave your opinion in the comments on, like, which edited video you want me to film next. Uh, new med vlog in six days, live stream, probably gonna be sewing. I've got a lot of socks that need darning that's all backed up right now. Um, my sock drawer in my closet is very apparently screaming at me about this. Uh, so, as I tend to say, bats and kisses, sweethearts, and I love you all so dearly, um, and please tell your friends, and if you enjoyed this, uh, hit the like button. If you did not, hit the dislike button. If you wish to subscribe to me for any reason, um, good or bad, uh, you know, like if you want to be notified for when to, you know, uh, log on, uh, hit the dislike before you before even 10 seconds has passed and then hurl obscenities at me in the comments uh, Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon um, But if you want to give me love you can do that as well the social media links including uh, Patreon and my tip jars are in the description box and Take care of yourselves and goodbye